once you're done with those training, now you need to decide what kind of a job you would do, right? Even if you did in a, an MD, PhD, you have all the, and that's the hardest one, right? Because you have been trained in science and from the beginning, and you have been trained in medicine from the beginning. So what do I do for a career? Do I do medicine or do I do science? Do I do both? And that's a question which everybody asks. So if you're asking that, it's not abnormal, that's totally normal. Um, so let us introduce you to these tracks with what a day in that career looks like. Correct. So suppose you decide I'm going to be a pure clinician, which means you have no research time. You either go to outpatient, you open your own clinic, or um, you go to inpatient, become a hospitalist. You have one week on, one week off. So both in private practice, private small hospital, if you go to inpatient, you work by yourself, you are independent. You um, when you are in the hospital, you provide your services to that hospital. When you're in a clinic, you are your autonomous body. You, in the clinic, you can bill for a procedure, increase your revenues. That clinician is, um, these are heavily paid jobs, right? So because you are um, private, um, you the more you work, the more you get. Some people do seven on, seven off, and in their off time, they do locums and they get paid more. So you're basically making a ton of money here. How do you enhance your um, skills? You in your clinic or in your hospital can um, enroll patients in trials. So you can say, hey, this trial is going on. And one of the trials on clinicaltrials.com, you say, I can enroll patients for you, get paid for those. And you also become part of those papers. Um, and you can teach. You can even teach in a clinical, uh, in a very private clinical setting. Like if you have your own clinic, you can invite med students, undergrads, residents to co come there for one day a week. Um, and the more you teach, the more you learn, and the more you disseminate the information. You have to become a mentor. So that's one pathway. The second pathway is of a clinician educator. So um, clinician educator is somebody who works in a clinic or hospital service like a pure clinician, but this is not private. This is a hospital which is owned by a university or a private group, but it has trainees, it has residents, it has fellows, it has medical students affiliated. So what you do is, um, if you are a hospitalist, you don't do all the work, the residents do it for you, they write notes, you teach, you teach, and you teach a lot. Um, if it is an outpatient, you have shadowing students, you have, as part of the curriculum, you have residents, you have resident clinic, you have stroke fellow clinic, and you have med students of my favorites. You teach the clinical skills, you do case-based teaching, you tell the medical student, okay, tomorrow you will read up on a hypothermia protocol after cardiac arrest. 15 minutes talk, the residents learn, the med student learns, everybody learns right? You do bedside teaching and it all helps the medical students. It helps you. And it really, honestly, this is the part, the teaching is the part which um, always reminds me why I stay in academics, because I like teaching, right? And some people don't like it and they don't want to stay in academics. They do private practice and it's a choice. Everybody is different. And of course, as a clinician educator, you will have graduate students, you will have MPH student, um, master students who want to do research and they want to come see how patients are or enroll them in, in their own trials. So uh, in a snapshot, this is the life of a clinical educator. You Do you get paid less than a private? Probably, um, but it's a different lifestyle and gives you more academic hook because you're involved with medical students. So what does a day in the life of a scientist look like, like a pure PhD scientist? 
this non-clinician. So they will either do a basic science or a lab-based research, or they are like clinical researchers who do epidemiology, a lot of um, statistics, um, data extraction, bioinformatics, and they can start with pharmaceuticals. They can work as co-investigators. They have to keep writing grants, get funding, look everywhere, publish papers, they teach, they do mentorship, they have postdocs, they have graduate students, they also have residence fellows, medical students rotating. You guys, most of you guys must have rotated in a lab in undergrad or in like a summer program. And people love that because it boosts up your CV and you learn more about research. But that's in a snapshot, a scientist, which you guys will not be because you are not pure PhDs. You already have an MD. The reason I'm showing you this because it takes us to this last step is what is the day in the life of a basic physician scientist? What do they do? So if you are a physician scientist uh, running a basic science lab, you have a lab, you have to manage a lab, uh, you have to manage the people in the lab. You have to make sure you have supplies. You need to make sure you have funding. Then you are also a clinician. You have to keep, keep up with your skills, not get trusted. So you do inpatient service. You do your clinic. You have your divided time as per your contract or your agreement with the department. You can enroll in clinical trials. And yes, of course, my favorite part, you teach. You teach, get to teach everybody. Like at the bench, you get to teach. At the, um, in the hospital, you get to teach in the clinic. You can do resident clinic. You can do fellow clinic. You can do clinic with med students. You can do your clinical trial, separate clinic, where you enroll your patients and still teach the nurse practitioners. So you get the full bundle. Um, a ton of meetings and you have to triage which ones to go to because you are now a physician and also a scientist so you have to do you have to do all the scientific meetings and you also have to do all the clinician meetings which if you put them all on your schedule you probably are doing meetings all day so you have to triage and the biggest part is mentoring uh, once you um, get to that point um, you need to learn how, not only how to teach, but to get those people who are working with you uh, to the next step and mentor them to this pathway if they, wherever they want to go. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.